Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I'm going to spend a little bit more time working on the bike and particularly the engine itself. I want to make it so the power source is um, free of issues or you know has as least issues as possible. And again, this engine is a 1942 APU unit. Uh, it was an auxiliary power unit for aircraft back in that time. And it would sit on the ground and it would just idle away and uh, supply a DC voltage to keep all the uh, electricals in the plane up and ready to uh, take off without the plane running. So again, there's not much of a use for that today in today's times, but I like the look of the engine. It kind of reminded me of an early motorcycle engine, hence why it got used for what it did. Having said that, it had um, a setup inside the motor for just a constant run of a certain RPM to put out a certain amount of voltage. And in, with that, it has an internal governor and it has uh, no, or it had on the carburetor, no butterfly. There was no throttle inside the carburetor. The, the throttle was restricted uh, further inside internally. So that was uh, kind of just tied up. I think I just tied it up with a mechanics wire so that the vein of it stayed open all the time. And then we went and got a, another carburetor that does have that throttle plate uh, throttle on the inside of it. And uh, it ran okay, but it had some issues. Uh, and I figured I'd address that at a later date. And the later date is now. So I'm gonna go start taking some of that stuff off of that motor. We're gonna get down to it and see if we can start uh, getting that thing to run by itself and idle and do all those happy things before everything gets buttoned up because I don't know what I'm going to use for a carburetor um, if that one does not work so I do not want to go through the time and effort of setting up a throttle and everything if uh, that is going to change so having said that let's dig in and we're in so that's the inside of the motor and it's a split uh, crankshaft you can see that it's uh, got a pin right there, it's a connecting rod. And half of the crankshaft on that side and the other half stays mounted in this half of the housing. Get a little pointer. So, that's the intake, that's where the carburetor is bolted to. And it's, like it's got like a little, uh, I'm not quite sure. If probably, maybe it holds tension on the crankshaft to one side to keep the play out of it. I'm not quite sure what the purpose of that is right there. That would be my guess though, what it does. But what it also has is the uh, governor built into it. And the governor would be this uh, plate right here. And as it would rev up, this plate would block off this passage. And we spin it so it makes more sense. So... That's the intake, and that's where it can draw air and fuel through the through the engine. And uh, for a, a predetermined amount of time, if you look, there's that much of a window, and then it blocks itself off, and it does nothing, does nothing, does nothing. Kind of comes around, and the port opens up again. Well, if it starts to over rev, it's got a plate that starts to block off this port so that it would uh, self-govern it itself and that's what this spring is on here and as it would spin faster and faster the spring would open up and that, that, that brass plate right there would choke this assembly right off completely. Um, I'm not sure what I want to do with it, I want, if I don't even want to do anything. You can see where I went and I just took a piece of mechanics wire and tied it over the whole assembly to keep it in the open position all the time and uh, have no governor. Uh, I kind of want to study it a little bit. I've never dealt with anything like this, so it's new to me too. I think I'm going to go underneath my uh, work lamp that's got the magnifying glass in it and just kind of look at it a little bit, try to educate myself on what is doing what on here. I don't know. any modifications I can make to help it along or we just kind of go with what we have and I want to seal that up 
you know, like the crankcase up a little bit better if that's the case. Probably come up with more of a permanent setup than that too. I don't think I want to change the mass of that too much either. It might be balanced. All right, so let me do a little bit of studying. So I cut that mechanics wire off and um, this took the spring off. The spring was right there. Mechanics wire was behind it. We'll kind of show that brass plate. So as it would spin, you know, that would block itself off and then as the RPMs would come back down, the spring would allow it to open up again and uh, allow the port to be open again. If there was an easy way to take it apart, I kind of think I was thinking about taking that brass right out of there. Um, it also looks like they're using for the seal, the crank seal. Let's see if I can do this. Let's see if I can grab it. It's got a couple of springs. I don't want to scratch it either. See how you can. It's got that preload on there. And it's this spring and this spring. So this is this is the half of the crankshaft going through to the output. Um, it's putting pressure on this plate, which is making a seal between these two, I guess, so it doesn't leak also. I don't see an issue with dealing with any of that. It also looks like they stacked like these brass washers on here. I wonder if this is for fine-tuning the um, RPMs. I guess you could also adjust the tension of the spring too, but it seems like there's you know, stacked weight there for a reason. Hmm. So to get the crankshaft out, this is the lobe for the points, and it looks like it's threaded on there, and then it's got a pin inside that. I don't know if that pin is spring, like how would you get that, I wonder if that pin is spring loaded. Doesn't seem like it. So you'd have to be able to back this off. Um, this is probably, these are probably just spacers, and then the whole shaft can slide out of there, but I don't see us being able to do that with that pin there. Yeah, I'm, seeing that. I'm not quite sure how that was installed. I don't know if it's tapped straight in. I don't know if it's going in this way. Hmm. I have to just leave well enough alone. So I figured I'd try maybe taking uh, some solder. And we solder up that spring so it becomes like one solid piece. And we'll see how that works out for us. I got the little solder, soldering iron out, and then we got. I clean that in a wire wheel, and then I have a flux over it. And let's see what we got. When in doubt, it's a little overkill. Smoking. We'll let that cool down and I'll give it a little tug on that, but I think that should do it. So I gave a tug on it and it uh, seems pretty stout. So I think we're uh, going to be good with that guy not opening. And uh, if it does, we could always take it back apart. But uh, I think that uh, should probably do it. The mechanics wire probably would have done it too. I just didn't want, if it ever did blow apart, that that wire would be flapping around inside the, uh, the case inside there. And I don't see this getting very hot down there. You know, the top of the engine probably gets to, you know, 
two, 250, something like that. Crankcase should be around 100 degrees. So definitely not going to be an issue where it uh, melts the solder. So we got the old cheese whiz right stuff. Uh, goobered up around there. I cleaned it up with a wire wheel. And uh, took off all the old material. Same for the intake. I cleaned off the intake there. Flange. And then the, uh, the case has been cleaned over here too. I'll probably get one more shot. I'll get that. Yeah, a little bit more scum on there. So we'll clean that up. Hit with a bit, a little bit of carb cleaner, and uh, we'll put that uh, case back together again. And we'll start uh, probably cutting into the carburetor next. We'll see how that looks. So I got that carb tore apart. Here's the body of it, but I just stripped everything out of it. And I think uh, my issue was well, the first thing was we had a, a bad float, and uh, Huck actually found had another float. I believe it. He had mailed me another float for it, which is this right here. We got that piece in there, but I think the needle and seat were still having an issue. And the needle and seat's kind of installed kind of weird on this. The, um, it's in the float ball, but it's coming in from the side. Generally, it's uh, attached to the upper section. So this float has a pin, kind of goes across like that, and it would turn it on and off from there, and as you can see. Uh, that's where uh, the seat of the needle is and the needles in the tray and then my new kit comes with all the goodies the gaskets and uh, a new needle and seat so hopefully that will take care of our issue when we put this thing back together so I'm going to do my attempt to get that guy out of there and uh, build us a good carb hopefully a good carb even came with instructions well, at least nice pictures. Kind of showing the orientation of it. And then it gives you some uh, setup parameters. Names all your bits and pieces. Looks a little fuzzy to me. And uh, got some adjustments and whatnot on there. How to set it up. So, I wish me well.
So, it's back apart again, and I'm trying to find out what's causing my issue. And I'm not quite sure, so I'm just kind of looking at different carbs that I had. This is another body of the same style of carburetor. I'm trying to look into like what would be the venting for the carb. So you got to figure if the float bowl would fill up, it has to have some way to be able to breathe or else fuel just couldn't come into the, to the carb. You'd use it all up but it has to be some kind of way for air to, to replace it. Uh, so I'm looking at these two holes up here, this one and this one. I tried shooting carb cleaner down through there. I can't get an air jet down in it to go try them. And you know, one exits here. And I looked at another carb. I see that it's plugged off. Uh, but I'm not sure if that's supposed to be plugged off. It seems like it's fairly hard material before I dig that out. But I want to go blow through this one. And this one is an open passage right through. You know, and again, I don't know whether that's supposed to be or not. I just don't know. So I figure I'm going to go try digging that guy out. And uh, we'll see what happens and see if that is maybe what's causing our issue. Seems like really hard material though, whatever it is. Can't see that. Uh... So let me get drill bit. We'll clean that out of there and see if that changes the performance of it at all. So it's like the next day, I kind of wanted to think about what was going on on this and uh, I, I'm not sure if the engine just does not want to run in a variable speed capacity or if the carburetor that is hooked to it just does not play well with the engine. So I figure what probably would be my best bet is, just, is to try to say take something that has a known good carburetor and put it on there and see if that will in, in fact help the um, help or hinder how it runs and then it, it'll help me steer 
my thought process to what is going on. Is it just that the way that the intake goes through the bottom of the crankcase, that it just doesn't like to play well at an idle? Or is it the um, just the wrong mix and jetting and everything altogether that doesn't feed that? So having said that, a while ago we had this motor, and it's actually a video of this one running. I kind of wanted to leave this together because it's a good power unit all by itself. I figured it would go great on a bike. But uh, it ran quite well and the carburetor uh, seemed to function uh, pretty decent. So I figure what we'll do is we'll take that guy off of there if I can and see if uh, maybe make another intake up or see how close that flange is to uh, fitting on there and try running it with that one and we'll see what kind of response we get of it. If it works well, then I'll leave it on the bike. If it doesn't work well, we'll continue with uh, uh, working with what we have. So I got that carburetor off of there and uh, it's a fairly nice tight package but the manifold that I made up for it is not going to work due to the fact that the fuel inlet is right there and I still have to put something on that. And that's right up against that housing. I gotta kinda probably make it something like, I don't know, probably something like that. So to go about doing that, I'm just gonna start from scratch and make a new uh, intake up so I took the gasket and uh, traced them on there and I'm gonna go over to bandsaw we're gonna go cut these two out in the bandsaw I'll, I'll punch the holes drill them actually I'll probably do that first I'll, I'll drill the holes first while it's supported and then cut those out with a bandsaw clean them up and we'll get a piece of piping of some sort with a bend on it to put it in a window where it'll work correctly for us so I got some flanges cut out and I bolted them one's on the carb and one's on the motor now and so I figured I'd just kind of hover in the air and see what's a, a best location for it. I was trying to copy the other one that was the other setup and uh, that wasn't going to work. Fuel line, this is the input for the uh, fuel line. So I'm thinking more, maybe if I can kick it that way. And that would give me room for an air cleaner on the other side. And I should be able to get to all the hardware on the card. So that's what I think kind of next. I'm going to look for material, an elbow of some sort to make that bend. Let's get that other carburetor on there. Maybe we'll give her a shot, see what we got. Let it the gas. I put a pegcock on that carburetor, so at least I got some place to turn it on and off. I didn't pull that carburetor apart at all, neither. We will just give it a shot. It's set at whatever it was running on that other motor, but the other motor had a revalve on it, so I, I doubt it's going to perform correctly, but let's go see. going to it.
already there. <laughs> uh, I think it's better. Seems like it wants to idle better. I'm not getting much of uh, any kind of response from either one of the mixed screws. So, you know, again, I'm taking it apart and clean it. Not that it's that big of a deal. But I wanted to just make sure that uh, we're close in the realm. It doesn't feel terribly hot. It feels actually a lot cooler. I could actually touch it than it did with the other one. All right, well, let's go get that cleaned up and uh, see if it performs any better. All right, so it's the next day. I got that carb all cleaned. I, I put it in the carb cleaner overnight. I reassembled it this morning. The intake is on there. Seems like it clears everything fairly decent. I purged the fuel that was in that tank and put some fresh two-stroke fuel in there, mixed 40 to one, and uh, kind of eliminate that variable too, because I'm not quite sure how old that uh, two-stroke stuff that I had was. It actually looked like it was mixed kind of rich, so uh, that may uh, be causing some of the problems on that. So I figure we'll uh, try firing it up again and see if we can dial it in and uh, see if it'll idle and get a nice rev out of it too. So oh, I also uh, welded up an exhaust leak on this guy. You can see where we're spitting out some of the oil down below. Again, let's uh, prop you guys up. Make sure that you can see. I think something like that. Wedges in there. Put a bottle return spring on, that might be a good idea. Open the door, turn the fans on, and uh, turn up the idle a little bit. So, it's okay. It just seems like it, at an idle, it just keeps, you can't find a happy spot where it's, uh, it likes it. It kind of just kind of farts and coughs and whatnot. So what this thing actually has in it too is uh, an anti-fowler. So 
that's in the spark plug hole, and then the spark plug is in there. I'm kind of wondering if possibly it's just kind of starving for spark a little bit, having to, uh, you know, seek out going through that. Unfortunately, I do not have, like this is an old style, like an old style spark plug would fit in there. And uh, I wanted to try something different. I wanted to see if the other red APU unit had that set up, but it does not. So it kind of still has me left guessing on um, what's causing it. So, not sure. It's getting better. You know, it'll idle, it'll rev. It doesn't idle well, it doesn't rev well. But, uh, you know, it's. I guess it would be usable. I guess it would push the bike down the road. So. I looked at that more carefully and it ended up being a two piece, you know, it's not one piece ground in. So I, I took a punch and I knocked it out of the center of it and I figured that kind of opened up our spark a little bit better. And I could use a longer plug too that kind of comes down into the combustion chamber a little bit closer. But uh, let's go see if this makes any kind of improvement. a lot better. 